I mean, yeah, I mean, the music's become more democratised in a sense because, you know, if you've got an iPad or, or something, it's, very, it's a lot easier to be able to um, compose or you know, experiment. And we're using, you know, up-to-date technology, but recording found sounds and still using, you know, um, methods that were used 50, 60 years ago. You had to use your imagination and envisage what sounds you could you could make and try things out. And I think that's that's the beauty of Delia's legacy. Delia Dark Today is an, like an electronic music charity, and we have two charitable objectives. One is to advance the education of electronic music via the works and archive of Delia Derbyshire, and the other one is to advance the art of electronic music by the um, works and archive of Delia Derbyshire. So we have a board of trustees, which includes the Delia Derbyshire estate. And um, yeah, so our work is at the moment project-based, and at the moment we're running a Heritage Lottery Fund um, supported project that's all celebrating what would have been Delia's 80th year. John Ryland's Library in Manchester, we've got the Delia Derbyshire Archive, was donated. So when I moved to Manchester and I was playing at Electronic Music Festival, someone said, oh, do you realise that one of the godmothers of electronic music, her archive has just been donated? So I was like, wow. And I set up Delia Derbyshire Day because I was like, we need to make a fuss of this. This is like the history of electronic music sitting here, especially Doctor Who composer. So, so what we've got here is some of the copies of her archive materials, so we can look at those today as well. We had a great morning, beautiful day in Barrow today and we had a lovely group of people. Um, we had some siblings working together really nicely, we had some parents and dads working really nicely with their, with their children and um, yeah, I think they made some, again, some weird and wonderful music inspired by Delia and her work and working methods. Delia has a wonderful appeal, especially with our workshops. Like we work, we do workshops in schools and then in events as well. And for non-musicians, if you like, people who don't have musical experience, as well as those who do and might have some formulas and shoulds in their heads, Delia's working their working methods at the time with the radiophonic workshop was using objects like a lampshade and then from that actually thinking what sounds do you want to extract it's very much about tuning into your environment it's about working with other people it's about having fun she had a lot of sense of humor in her work and i think each time people come up with something that's authentic to themselves which is really nice as opposed to a formula it's um, i think it's inspiring because you can show them techniques that Delia used, so kind of changing pitch and reversing things and, you know, her, some of her methods that, that we can translate to garage band on the, on the iPad. So it's very, it's quite instant in some, in some senses, but also, you know, you do find young, so young people really get into it and they can really sort of experiment with sounds. Yeah. Also, everyone's growing up with electronic music now. It's like yeah. it's almost it, you live it, and also you live the sounds. So I keep hearing these seagulls and thinking, oh, I can hear it's panning from left to right, and as it goes higher, the frequency is slightly changing. And actually, I think it, I like to think it sort of means that people aren't just consumers of music. Even if they never make music again, they understand just a little bit more about when they're watching a TV programme or when they're yeah. hearing those things. They're not just passive consumers. They are, they're, they're a bit tuned more... Tuned in. Yeah, they're tuned in and they're a bit more aware of, OK, that's how that was made. For example, with that traffic sound behind us, someone wanted to record that. And then she thought, OK, there's something else we need. So then we added some echo and some reverb. This is quite technical. It's the fundamentals yeah. of composition, it's just producing, it's being a sound engineer, you know, it's all these potential jobs or at least passions that people can follow. I think 
hopefully we're, you know, we keep planting the seeds and people will listen in a different way. And just, that's very much how Delia listened. Brian Hodgson, Delia is one of his best friends, said that he, she didn't just listen to sound, she listened into sound. So when they went on holiday and she said, you know, the first thing she said to him all day was about the thunderstorm, you know, and it's like that thing of how if you can help people listen into sound, hopefully you, in, I think a well-being thing really, you feel more connected to life, yeah. life feels more interesting. Thank you. 